So yeah, The Flash just got more crazy, if that's possible. Um, season 6, episode 13, uh, You Got a Friend in Grodd, was the latest one that just aired last night. It was awesome. It was interesting. It had callbacks and little details and Easter eggs that I didn't even like know or were expecting. Uh, yeah, it was altogether like a really good episode. Uh, so if you guys go on to enjoy the video, like, comment, subscribe, share. Would love to hear from you guys. Did you enjoy the episode? Did you not? How are you liking the season so far? Post merged Earth. Uh, let me know down below. Uh, enjoy the video. So I'm very excited and caffeinated to talk about this episode with you guys. You know, sometimes I really wish that we had, like, the actual jitters here, because I would totally get a Flash or a Vibe or a Killer Frost. That would be awesome. Anyway, sidetrack aside, this episode had some awesome moments in it. Um, the ending, I totally called it. I'm sure there are so many other people who did too, but... I'm going with Mirror Mistress for now. I'm sorry, I'm giving away the ending. I'm going to go through like the actual episode, but like, Mirror Mistress, she's there and it's awesome and I can't wait uh, to see. I'm pretty sure they're doing some kind of team up thing and I'll talk more about that later. So excuse my voice too, I have a little bit of a cold at the moment, but I'm going to be pushing through that and reviewing this episode because again, it was one of the more awesome ones. I, I liked last episode just fine, but like this one was like... I don't want to say the better one, but it was just really cool. So in the very beginning, we get kind of like a heart-ish scene where Barry is like walking around with flowers, and we found out later that he's looking for his mom's grave or his parents' grave, which is a little bit I, I, don't, I don't want to say like weird because they're still alive in this world technically. Now I know his parents said, but like a version of them is alive. But I'm glad that we got to see this because we don't really get to see many moments like this. It was like very season one where we got to see him kind of like mourning his parents grave and him trying to adjust to these changes so having him go to his parents like gravesite is like a little interesting thing to kind of get us used to him like not being used to the world and it kind of makes sense too because like he, john couldn't like put the entire memory of the entire world back with every little detail changed so it makes sense that he would be like a little bit confused on where things are which means everyone else should be way more confused just saying like supergirl batwoman they should all be like the same level maybe unless it's something to do with the death of speed force i'm going off on a tangent um and we get <laughs> the hartwell's back and he's a villain again which i'm kind of glad they did because i feel like he makes a better villain than good guy him flying though was ridiculous and very cicada whatever season he was in if that tells you how much i <clears throat> wasn't really a fan of that whole thing it was cool though, it was like a cool effect. I'm actually surprised they had the budget for that effect, because it was again, relatively good. Um, but yeah, we get Chester and, god, I'm gonna butcher her name, or not even remember her name, um, Cisco's girlfriend, uh, Manning the Comms. And I, I like the new little Team Flash, I feel like they're like the B team, or like the backup squad. I like Chester, I like her, but like, that's who they are and it's cute. Um, Barry Nunn, I want the backstory now to what they did to him. Like, that is a very integral part. I, I want that story. I bet it was great. And maybe we'll see it in, like, a flashback at one point. Hopefully. Hopefully. And Flash getting almost hit by the train was hilarious. For a second, I really thought that he did get hit by it. I forgot that he could phase and that they were just going to be, like, super healing. But no, he phased through it, which is probably the better option. Um... But yeah, just again, him getting used to new, uh, ooh, him getting used to all the new changes is like a really cool concept. But again, I just wish they would do that for everyone else too. Now, him working on getting into something that I really enjoy because like this is like of course up to now the point where he's supposed to be like I guess the future Flash or like the Flash future-ish Flash. So I'm glad we get to see him working with Gideon. That is, of course, when we get him him working on it, and then Chester coming in and, of course, setting the whole episode into motion. And yeah, I feel bad when he was, like, when he was asking Gideon all the changes, and they were like, however many trillion. Which, this is something that I, I'm going to talk about in my Batwoman review and my Supergirl review, because I'm going to be doing them, I promise. But it's a plausible, like 
you there are some things you have to let go um i was about to totally butcher that it's like there's little things that you, you have to accept in watching these shows like the legends would have been on these guys in like however long because of all the accurate oh no no after the after this after the post crisis so of course the timelines all changed but i'm just saying like there are some things you just they let go like the fact of all that and the people and the people going about their lives like i previously mentioned it was something that i did point out but like something i'm giving them credit for it that they can't really like what are you gonna do it's a comic book show you can't have everything like just fit in to fit logic i know that kind of makes it doesn't make any sense but like that is my end of rant moving on with the episode um i really like chester um i'm curious though if he still has his black hole powers like that was something that i don't know if was brought up um i had to add him to the list of people that now know the flash is barry allen <laughs> just i think that's funny the amount of people that know at this point like why does he even keep it a secret everyone knows that barry allen is the flash um but yeah this is where we get the scene of him opening up about his parents cemetery which was very heartfelt and like it hit me in feelings um you'd think though with all their technology they would have been able to find it because you know it's a simple it should just be like Barry Allen or Nora Allen, whatever. It should just be as simple as looking up a last name. But I'll, again, I will give it the benefit of the doubt and say there's probably some actual reason as to why they could not do it. Um, and that is, of course, when we cut back to the scene of Iris. Uh, trapped in the mirror dimension, which I already talked about, but I will talk about it here again. And that is Mirror Mistress, because yeah, that's what I'm going with now. Um manipulating her essentially and i don't know what this machine actually is if it's keeping her there or what but we get them kind of like going back and forth and of course like i said they're she, she's manipulating iris but to what end is the question because clearly she has the device and like had the ability to use it so it kind of brings us to like why like what is the end game of this now cut back to the scene of harrison Sorry, I forgot. Nash Wells and his daughter, assistant. I'm I'm genuinely curious as to the relationship now. He said work partner, but like he's clearly very attached. Um, but yeah, we get him. You know, he's this is scene. This whole scene is really interesting because we get visions of Sherlock Wells. Um, because you know before he saw actual Harrison Wells and now he's seeing Nash Wells, which brings into question: Is he just seeing all of these in his mind? Is he going crazy? What is actually going on? I think it could just be maybe it's Reverse Flash screwing with him. I think that would be interesting too. But it's seeing uh, there's just certain little things that like that wouldn't really make sense. And since he was there and people could see him, but like I wouldn't put it past him. He has tricks and stuff. He could have done something like that. Or it's just him going crazy and feeling guilt over what he did. You know, turning to Pariah, kind of starting the whole mess. And then, of course, we get, like, the thing blowing up in his face. the His daughter or partner or whatever finding out. And we get that whole mess. Now cut to the scene where Barry puts the thing in his ear, which Chester had messed with when we found that at the end. Um, and he gets, of course, transported into Grodd's mind. And I thought this whole thing was interesting. Uh, I had kind of figured it would be something mind-related and that he wouldn't actually go to the past. But I think it was awesome seeing season one, Caitlin and and Wells. That was great. Uh, and he's uh, to, about the banana. Uh, don't offer Grad a banana. It makes him angry. And, but yeah, the whole Barry being stuck in the cage thing. I, I just loved all the scenes. I thought it was really interesting and a, a really good way to like go back to kind of season one without like time travel or anything like that. And of course we get a scene with Mira, Iris, and Joe. Now, I really was thinking that she was going to get caught <coughs> at one point during their interactions because she started getting really aggressive and angry. And of course, afterwards, she was using his computer when they set a lunch date. I honestly thought that Joe was going to kind of see through that and be waiting there for her. That didn't happen, but like, as these scenes of her getting like more and more aggressive, I'm sure they're going to eventually start to figure it out. Or I was just going to straight up come through and like tell them, but like, I feel like at one point someone's going to like 
get to the point of, oh, Iris is now acting weird, because out of all the, they've had so many seasons with kind of the same premise, like, you'd think that someone would realize by now that, like, oh, something's wrong. But anyway, uh, moving on, that is where we get cut back to the Star Labs with Chester and Killer Frost and him realizing that it was all his fault. I feel bad for Chester. No, I'm sorry, I jumped ahead of a lot of scenes, actually. Um, this is where we cut back to Killer Frost, um, and Chester, and I guess this is kind of to the scene where he realized he did everything wrong since he thinks he killed Barry. Um, I thought that was really funny. I like having him. We need some kind of comedic person there, and Chester fits. I, I like him. I don't really have or have heard anything about anyone having, like, any bad feelings toward him. Um, at all, really. He's just, like, a really, he's an interesting, funny-ish background character. But yeah, Barry apparently lying on the floor, dying. And then, of course, that's where we get back to inside of Grodd's mind. And I'm surprised Barry didn't figure something out sooner, I guess. Given the time frame and stuff, it makes sense. But, like, them having him do sign language, oh, that was really cool. Like, the old scenes with Caitlyn interacting with him was really sweet. Um, Grodd thinking that, he be that she betrayed him was kind of sad. Um, I really enjoyed their whole relationship. And then of course we get more, that is of course we get more like of Grodd speaking through Caitlyn and Wells. And again, this is a very good way to like kind of get back to season one-ish like roots without doing like time travel or something like that, something that we haven't seen already. So I thought that was good too. Um, I kind of like, I really, okay, I enjoy the Grodd being a good guy kind of thing. I think it makes way for like newer villains. It makes way for allies, like bringing in a whole new set of the villains and letting you know that like we're past that stage. Grodd's a relatively like he's at peace now. Like we find out at the end of the episode, but like I like kind of him getting a redemptive arc because of like how he was treated and stuff like that. He was treated fairly poorly. Um, he is definitely still a bad guy, but like you know, redemption. Um, but yeah, I felt bad when he was talking. Well, most of Grodd's scenes does make me feel bad because, like, he was trapped in a cage and, like, he brings it out now. And, uh, that's where he talks about, like, how his mind and stuff like that was trapped and how he essentially wants help now. Um, were there many, were there any other way for him to do it? Absolutely not. So, I mean, he did what he had to do. Again, he's still a bad guy, but, like, I felt bad, so, like, kind of gets a pass-ish this episode Barry knocking him out was such a jerk move though um I, I I guess we don't always understand like the scope of what happened but like that was a really jerk move and I thought didn't expect it from Barry at all like this is definitely not like the and I guess he's trusted and lost things a lot so he's very untrusting at this point but still I just I really didn't expect that that was like a really that's kind of out of character, in my opinion. Barry's always been, like, uh, relatively understanding. But again, I guess in this circumstance, it's different. And, of course, I love the scenes. This is where we go back to Star Labs, and I love the scenes of Chess freaking out everything. He's really, like, us in that scenario. And we get kind of it's playing out, and um, as we cut back to Caitlyn's talk with... Sorry, Frost's talk with Nash Wells... Uh, these scenes aren't my favorite part, but, like, it pushed the story forward, so, like, it moves that story line forward, so I guess I will take it, but just not my favorite part. Flash going meeting Salazar and getting his butt whooped was great. Um, was he about to, like, I thought he, for a second, he was about to kill him, honestly, when he started doing the phaser hand things. Um... Yeah, I thought that would eventually we just went full on kill mode, but like I thought that was a little bit out of character. Oh, and that of course is when we figure out that uh, Barry's trapped in Grodd's mind, and that it's about to crumble over. Uh, Chester, he isn't my. I, I know I said I liked him, and I really do, but like, he's not. He's good in comedic moments, not so serious scenes. So, like, I couldn't really take it that seriously. Um, no issue to the actor or anything like that, but just, he does more funny than he does serious. Yeah, that was fun. And, of course, we get kind of the back and forth back to Iris at CCPD, tricking Joe West. Now, I really, 
this is again the scene where I thought that he was gonna come in and see her, but like, you'd think that after- I'm sorry, I'm griping this for a long time. But like, you'd think that after all that, like, people would notice when people start acting weird in the universe. But I guess he's just like, trustingly trusting. So I guess I give him a pass, you know, it's his daughter, it's after crisis, things are happening, whatever. Um, and that is when we cut back to the mirror world and with Eve, or i.e. Mirror Mistress, telling Iris the reason why they can't go through, and she sticks her hands through and gets burned horribly. So I'm wondering what, like, is it a prison world? Did, like, Mirror Master trap her in? No, well, clearly he didn't trap her in there, but, like, she's some kind of entity being trapped in there. Are they all, like, mirror versions and someone else of hers trapped in there, too? Like, the theories are everywhere. Tell me what you guys think. I would love to hear what you guys think. Um, is this, like, a whole other universe that we have to contend with now? Like, let me know. But yeah, her doing that was disturbing. <laughs> and I guess that definitely turns Iris off to trying to go through. So, mission accomplished. And this is a game where I get to see my favorite scenes this episode were all Grodd. Um, he comes to Grodd in the embodiment of Joe West. Which is a great little ploy, so good on Grodd, knowing where to hit uh, Barry in the feelings. And he was just talking. He was just talking about how he wants peace now. He's, And I think it's interesting that some people remember and some people don't. Clearly a higher level of intelligence like Grodd would probably remember. I imagine there's like just certain entities, beings, and creatures in the Arrowverse in Earth Prime that would just remember out of because of certain enhanced ability or whatever. Grodd being, of course, one of those exceptions. And again, I know I just said it, but this is one of my favorite scenes because it has Grodd genuinely talking about how he's changed, how he had time to think, and how now he just wants peace. How that's no longer his home. And it maybe was once, which is, I find really interesting because that was all he knew. And that was his place. It was kind of captivity, but like he still had Caitlyn and things. But like how now he just wants to be at peace. He doesn't want power anymore. He just wants to live in the new world. And I thought that was great. It made me feel for Grodd. It made me feel for Barry, seeing the little parallels and how they both realize they have to just accept the world as it is and move forward. I liked it. That was nice. This is one of my I guess one of my favorite scenes is up next to where we get the merging of of Grodd and Barry Allen. Um, my other favorite scene was Grodd uh, Run Grodd Run. I really enjoyed that. Just seeing those two merge, and I couldn't even get it like a good picture of it. But like the insignia flashes, lightning bolt appears like in Grodd's chest. I thought that was really cool too. But yeah, this is the whole battle scene. Grodd Flash, what is that gonna be called? Um, but yeah, I thought it was awesome because this happened in the comic book like more than once. Um, Grodd getting like super speed. Of course, he was an enemy then. This one, he's like a friend, so I thought that was cool. And we get them, the cutscenes between this and Star Labs, and of Grodd and Barry working together to defeat Salazar. <clears throat> I thought that was really interesting. Seeing them work together was really good. I like seeing old enemies turn friends type situation, like Chester said. Um, and yeah, just the two of them fighting was like really cool. Um, them almost losing, and that is the run, Grodd, run scene, and he just like, I thought at first Grodd was going to throw lightning, I thought that would have been much cooler. Maybe there was no like budget for it, but like, seeing Grodd throw lightning would have been awesome. <laughs> and it kind of sucks we won't get to see that again. But yeah, and we get them like jumping through the portal, and again, that lightning bolt on the chest was really cool. I, again, I wish I had a, like a clearer shot of that. I probably will later, like after the video is already up. Um... But yeah, well, of course we get the uh, Barry waking up, Grodd, and going, well, essentially, Grodd gets probation, which I think is funny, and we get that whole scene, the whole entire thing with Barry and Chester talking, and, like, kind of the team talking about that. I thought that was, f Grodd is officially on probation. That just, that whole concept just makes me laugh. Um, and yeah, we get... Barry finally accepting... Oh, we get a really cute moment where Chester finds um, the gravesite for Barry, which was really good. And this character building, team building for the new like set of team. Um, and we get him offering up a olive branch of being on the comms. 
and him never getting old, never getting sick of the, the whooshing out. Um, that was funny. And then at the end, my favorite part, the big reveal. Eve is the bad guy. Iris is bandaging her up and she sends I, Eve sends Iris to go in more bandages and we see the mirror. And I'm going to talk about the scene in the next one separately because we do get like a cut between this and the other ending which is of Nash Wells. Um, but yeah, so we get this scene of Eve talking to Mirror Iris and I, Mirror Iris is also in pain. So like they're clearly connected somehow. I would love to hear what you guys think about that. Um, like how are they connected and why are they connected? I find that interesting. And clearly um, Eve has some kind of power there because she heals Mirror Iris. Um, it's like an extension, a you know, symbiote type thing, but I think she's literally just like another entity. And then we get the big reveal, the biggest reveal. I say this about every part, but my favorite part, Reverse Flash is back. We get Nash Wells being put up against the wall by Harry or by one of the other Wells. I get I get them so mixed up. There's so many at this point. Um, our, our newest Wells, Nash Wells, gets pushed up against the wall. I think maybe that's Sherlock by Sherlock Wells. And he his eyes start turning red, he starts vibrating, and he says lines, he's coming. Or he's back. Something of that nature. And anyway, his eyes are going red and he just pushes them against... So, is this all just a big thing by Reverse Flash? It very well could be. Or it could just be like deep psychological issues post-crisis for Nash Wells. But I really feel like they're setting up Reverse Flash to be like a villain or like a leering thing over the end of the season. So let me know what you guys think. I think it could definitely be the Flash messing with the Wells, or it could be, again, just Nash dealing with post-crisis stuff. I definitely think it could be like a mixture of the two, actually. Like maybe Reverse Flash is using it against him to kind of like mess with him since he knows what's happening or something. I would love to hear what you guys think. All in all, I enjoyed that episode a lot, actually. It was a callback to season one. It had some good moments it had some awesome grod moments where i really enjoyed my favorite parts like i said and if you guys enjoyed the video like comment subscribe share i'd love to hear from you guys and i'll be putting up my supergirl and batwoman reviews later on hopefully today uh 